Hello and welcome back to RC Model Reviews and this is the announcement I signalled I would be making in my uh, uh, weekly news, my not so weekly weekly news and it pertains to the future of the channel and myself. Now let's first of all look at a few things. A lot of people, well a few people actually, some of the trolls have said oh he's making a fortune out of this channel, don't send him any money, he's ripping you all off, he's, he's you know making a lot of money. Well Let's have a look at how much money I'm really making out of this channel. This is the Social Blade website, and they have pages for every YouTube channel showing what they estimate the channels are earning in terms of revenues. And let's have a look at RC model reviews here. Uh, you can see there's two figures given uh, for annual estimated annual earnings. One is the minimum, one is the maximum. That's sort of the range of income they figure that you might be earning. And the reality is that the there is even the average is a little optimistic. So if you take the average and then go a bit closer to the lower end. That is what I'm earning. I can't tell you exactly what I'm earning from this channel because YouTube prohibits its partners from disclosing that information. But as I say, if you look a bit under the average of these two numbers, you're getting close to what I earn from RC model reviews. Now, <laughs> if these people think this is a fortune and I'm making a killing, then they must be really poor and they must be able to live on the smell of an oily rag because I know I can't. Um, so that dispels that myth. Uh, for a start. But I mean the people who have trolled on my channels have always just plucked numbers out of their ass and made facts up to suit their argument. They've never pre presented any evidence to support what they're doing. So good luck to them. Um, I think most people realise that. So the real sort of mainstay of what I've been doing has been the XJet channel. Now if we look at the XJet channel and we go back to 2012 uh, before Model Flying New Zealand pulled my wings, that channel was delivering over one and a half million views a month. Now those are good numbers, you can live on that. You're not going to get rich on it, but you can live on it. So I was doing okay and I'd started the RC Model Reviews channel and I figured that the money I made from XJet I would pour into RC Model Reviews to grow that channel up. And I knew that RC Model Reviews would never be a real money spinner because RC Model Reviews only appeals to the people who fly radio controlled models. And you know, this is a an active but it's not a large community. As a percentage of the population not a lot of people fly RC models. So I never figured that RC model reviews would be the thing that paid the bills but I figured it was a worthy channel to set up because it enabled me to teach people, to inform people, to educate them, to show them what was crap and what wasn't. So I made the hobby safer, more accessible and more affordable to people all over the world. And I've had thousands of emails from people saying thank you so much for what you're doing on RC Model Reviews. It saved me money, it's showed me how to do things, it's got me into something like mini quads. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And that's great. That's the reward I expected from RC Model Reviews. And if I've got those people, I've made those people happy, then I'm happy. And I mean, I, I also spend inordinate amounts of time on a one-to-one -one basis. I get phone calls every hour of the day and night. I get scores of emails every day and I get people rolling up at my door at the workshop um, you know during the week and on the weekends with problems that I fix help them fix and things like that you know that's what I do I see you know I've had over 50 years of joy from this hobby and I've never killed anybody never injured anybody never damaged any third party property and so I figured it was time to give back when I could and I, I'm in a position to give back because I have the skills I have the knowledge I have the experience and I'm more than happy to share that with people who can benefit from it through this channel and uh, so everything was looking rosy until 2012. And the model flying New Zealand, out of, for a number of reasons, all politically motivated, decided to pull my wings. And as regular viewers know, you can't, can't fly at an airfield or within 4K of an airfield without these wings that model flying New Zealand enjoys the monopoly in distributing or, or granting. Now I'd had my wings for many years and I had an instructor's rating as well. So it's not like I'm an idiot or um, you know, unqualified, uh, un you know, um, incompetent, lacking um, proficiency. Um, so they pulled my wings in an unprecedented move they pulled my wings and then they decided that hey we can make money out of this so we'll make wings contingent on membership and then they refused to give me membership. So even though they promised they would accept my membership when it came to the crunch by unanimous decision of the committee they refused my membership. So, and they're still telling people today, the only problem is he won't rejoin. But they seem to forget that when I applied to rejoin, they refused it. So they're lying. They have lied from day one. And there's nothing I can do about that. I think most of the world modeling community understand that Model Flying New Zealand are dishonest. And they are not true to their goals. If we look on, their, on the Facebook page, they say they're here to promote the hobby and support the hobby. Well, <laughs> I think I have done 
many orders of magnitude more in terms of promoting this hobby and supporting it than they have ever done. They have $200,000 in the bank. I have nothing in the bank, but I do the job they claim to be doing, work it out. But anyway, getting back to numbers, as you can see, the XJet revenues, after my wings were pulled in 2012, they fell significantly. And then they leveled out a bit because I was able to fly at the airfield again under other people's wings and with a, an exemption that CIA gave me, which was um, short-lived because they imposed all sorts of conditions. And then once that expired, again, revenues dropped right off. Now they're one third, one third of what they once were, which means the revenues are one third. So suddenly I've gone from you know, earning this much to earning a third that much. And I, there's no way I can survive on that. It's ridiculous. Nobody could live on the money that I'm earning. And as a result, We've, we've invested everything we have, my wife and I invested everything we have in this channel and in the two channels. Um, we bought this workshop, fortunately we had some help for that and I appreciate the help we got in buying this workshop. But then we invested $5,000 in building the studio so I could work throughout the year on RC model reviews. And we figured that people like Model Flying New Zealand, well, hopefully there'll be a change in the executive and the new people might not be so boneheaded. That didn't happen. Um, so our faith was misplaced. And I mean, Model Flying New Zealand has really shafted us. Now, if we were doing something wrong, if we were killing babies, if we were promoting people to do bad things, if I myself had been convicted of offences under the Civil Aviation Act, like the local Model Flying New Zealand Club president, I would understand it. But no, it's purely politics, purely personal. And as a result, all the money we've invested into this venture is gone. And the future looks pretty bleak. Uh, I have run-ins with the council and with CAA as well, but ultimately that has all been driven by Model Flying New Zealand. If Model Flying New Zealand hadn't acted like a bunch of petulant children, we wouldn't have had the problems with CAA, we wouldn't have had the problems with the council. The Model Flying New Zealand has been directing these organisations in, in their approach to me, so there's nothing I can do. It's a very sad indictment on Model Flying New Zealand, um, an organisation whose time is gone, but they still cling on to power. Um, and still tell lots of lies, but never mind. So I find myself in the very, very sad position of having to say that as of the end of September, I will be taking a break from, model from, from, from um, RC model reviews. And not a break I want to take, but it's an enforced break. I have to take the break. Now, next month, or September, I, which is next month, I will be spending every moment I have and every penny I have to try and get all these outstanding reviews finished. Now that's going to mean spending a lot of money because, for example, I did the Walkera Runner 250 review part two. I had to do a flight review. I couldn't do it around here. Nowhere I can legally fly around here because of the new CAA regulations and the fact that I don't have wings. So I travelled to the nearest district because people had said to me, why don't you just travel to another district and do your flight review? So I thought, okay, I will try it out. I travelled to Rotorua, which is a district about an hour from here. So I loaded up the truck with the wife and the Walkera 250 and the camera gear and everything. Remember, it's only a small truck and it's only got you know, two seats in the front. It was a real squeeze, but we loaded it up. Drove about an hour to get to Rotorua, to a park over there where you're legally allowed to fly. Unfortunately, there were horses and people and dogs and children and everything all around. So we were there for three hours and we got less than 30 minutes in which we could fly. So of that 30 minutes, unfortunately, when you've got people and dogs and cows and there's, there's planes flying overhead at low altitude. It's legal, is it safe? Most of the footage I got wasn't usable because the, the stuff to camera, there was too much background noise from cars and people and planes, so we couldn't use that. So out of the entire five hours, because once we'd packed up there, an hour to drive home, out of five hours time from the time I left till the time I came back, I got 90 seconds, less than 90 seconds of usable video. And that's just not economic. There's no way you can make that. Plus, I had to spend half of my entire month's fuel budget traveling backwards and forwards, so there's no way that's sustainable. I thought, mm, okay, that sort of seals that. Um, and so, uh, but in order to finish these other reviews, I'm going to have to do it again. So I'm going to spend a lot of money on travel out of the district so I can finish these reviews. And it's unfortunate, but I have to do it because we're down to our last month's worth of money. We can't keep propping this up because XJet continues to decline because I can't fly. Now, XJet is the fun channel. RC model reviews, as I say, it's only a very niche market. The only people who watch this channel are people who are in the hobby. Exit people watch with, from all, you know, sort of all directions. It's more of an entertainment channel. And everyone likes seeing other people have fun, especially on YouTube. So the videos I've posted to 
uh, XJet have had much wider appeal. Even though the subscriber levels for XJet and RC model reviews are about the same, XJet has had three times the viewer count at one stage because the videos I posted have a much broader appeal. And so that's where the money is. The money's there. So I cannot afford to continue subsidising what I'm doing. And it, you know, as I say, there's no point in sending me money because money isn't really the problem. That's a symptom of the problem. The problem is I'm not allowed to fly. For solely political reasons, I'm not allowed to fly. So I can't produce the videos. Even if I had money, I still can't produce the videos that I need to produce. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to step down from RC model reviews, I'm going to take a break from RC model reviews, I'm going to focus on XJet. I'm going to create videos there that hopefully will have a broader appeal. I can get the view counts back up again because that's where the money is. That's what I need to pay my rent. That's what I need to pay for the fuel for my truck. That's what I need to pay for the lease of the ground in which my workshop sits. That's where I have to get my money from. So there'll be a lot more videos coming out on XJet, but they won't be model related because I can't fly. And so I'm going to have to do different things. So fortunately, XJet is a more diverse channel. I've done all sorts of stuff on XJet. And I'll be looking at other stuff other than model stuff. So unfortunately, because ultimately because of what Model Flying New Zealand has done, I'm going to have to bow right out of the hobby until things change. They may not change. This may be the, the last, next month may be the last month in which I post any hobby RC flying related videos because of the actions of Model Flying New Zealand. Because I have to support my wife and myself. We can't avoid that. It's a fact of life. So, yeah, I'm really kind of pissed off. And I hope you're pissed off too because, you know, when you look at it, you've really got to ask yourself, what is motivating Model Flying New Zealand? What is behind this? And it's nothing more than pride, petty politics, and, I don't know, some crazy thing going on in their heads, you know. Uh, Far from promoting the hobby, they've been bringing it into disrepute in this country for three years, and they're not about to stop. <laughs> God. Anyway, so that's what I have to do. Now, I have looked at the other options because people have said, hey, why don't we crowdfund you? So the first thing I did was look at, hey, can we crowdfund a property where I can relocate in an area where I can fly? and perhaps even set up a little model park or something and invite people in. You know, if you've, got, if you've got a couple of hectares of land, you can get a model flying area set up and people can come and enjoy it as much as I would. Of course, the problem is price. In New Zealand, property is ludicrously expensive. The only, and also there's a case of trying to find something. First of all, it has to be um, near enough, because my wife has a support network um, that she had, friends she had before she had her accident and she relies on those friends for support. Um, it has to be reasonably close to where we are now, but just outside the district. Um, obviously, we don't want to be inside the district because of all the political hassles. We want to move outside the district, but we don't want to move too far. Um, it has to have broadband, obviously, because I'm not uploading these videos through a dial-up connection. That would take weeks for every video. Um, it has to have some, some land available that I could fly over. It has to have accommodation and some kind of workshop or, or um, shed or something that I can use to do my videos and my work in. I did find one place. There's one place that fit, ticks all the boxes. It's three hundred and sixty thousand dollars New Zealand. You know, that's I don't know, it's about twenty five cents US now, but um, it's it's a lot of money. And there's no way people have said, well, crowdfund it. No, let's be sensible. Let's honestly look at this. When I crowd crowdfunded to raise money to set up a model park here, um, I got a total of forty thousand dollars pledged from all my XJet subscribers. Remember, XJet's got more subscribers than RC model reviews. $40,000. Well, that's actually less than one-tenth of what it would take to buy this property for me and for so I can do all these videos. Because if I want to, I went to the tax department and worked out the tax situation. If I want to buy a property, I've got to get one-third more than the amount I'm going to spend on the property because all the money that people send me is taxable. So one-third of it goes straight to the tax department. So if I want $300,000, I have to raise well, um, over $400,000. If I want $400,000, I've got to raise over $520,000. It's, it's a huge amount of money just to give straight to the tax man, and I'm really not comfortable with that. Why should you be paying our tax man a third of every dollar you give me? But that's the way it is, because land property is not deductible here. So that makes it a bit even more expensive than it should be. So I consider that just wasn't a viable option. It's a shame. It is perfect, absolutely perfect. Uh, you know, I'd hope that you know, maybe I'd find someone who would buy it as an investment and then lease it to me, but that's not going to happen either. So I would discount that. So I looked at what can I lease or rent, because that's a lot cheaper option. And there's nothing. I looked around high and low, the entire length and breadth of the country, and the only places that were there, they didn't tick enough of the boxes. Some of them didn't have 
adequate broadband, which would have been a complete waste of time considering that my whole um, focus is on YouTube and you know, large video files. Um, some of them didn't have any kind of shed or building, they were just a little house, which means there would be nowhere for me to set up all my gear and um, build models and do all the stuff that I do. And I've got a heap of gear here that would need to be relocated when I move away from here, so that wasn't viable. Um, and the other problem is that in New Zealand we don't have a culture of leasing, long-term leasing. Everything's just rented month by month. So even the properties that came close to ticking the boxes, they were only available on short-term rental. So it's, there's no point in relocating everything to somewhere else in the country, only to find that in two or three months' time you're kicked out and you've got to go somewhere else. There's no secure, security of tenancy. So um, it's just you know, an impractical. So I'm stuck here. And as long as I'm stuck here, I can't do the videos I need to do to support myself if those are model-related videos. So despite my best efforts, despite all the time and money and sweat I've put into doing what I'm doing here, and despite what I think are all the good things I've done for the hobby, because of the actions of a tiny group of grumpy old men at Model Flying New Zealand, I'm going to have to call it a day, at least for the time being. So I'm not going to take the channel down, obviously, I'm going to leave it up. But there just won't be any more model-related videos because I can't afford to do it. And even if I could afford, I can't practically do it unless I can relocate. And there's no practical way to relocate. No affordable, no practical way to relocate. So I'm stuck here. And that means XJet Channel will have some more videos. And I have to cater. It really pees me off a little bit because when you look at the stuff that draws in the money and the views, it's stuff like PewDiePie, some idiot guy ranting and raving, um, mind you I do that, um, but he gets tens of millions of subscribers. Um, it's not the informative stuff, it's not the educational stuff, it's not the stuff that really matters in our lives, it's the, it's the fluff, you know. I mean after all the Cardassians are famous for being famous and they make a fortune, yet there's people out there who toil away helping others, doing good deeds and contributing massively to the total value of society and they get nothing. <laughs> it's just the way the world turns. So I'm going to have to try and cater a little bit more to the entertainment side of things, to the thing that attracts people to watch videos. They don't necessarily subscribe because of those videos, but they watch them. And it's not the number of subscribers, it's the number of views that matter when you're trying to make a living out of YouTube. So there you go, those are the facts, that's the situation. I'm very sad, and as is my wife, um, that we have, I guess, well I guess we have failed, we've failed. We, we, misjudged people. We relied on the fact that we thought that growing people would get over themselves and act responsibly and be true to their stated objectives rather than just paying lip service to what they're doing and focusing instead on you know, um, pursuing personal vendettas and petty politics. It's sad, it's tragic, but it's the way life is. I, you know. Now I, as people have noticed, I mean I haven't been feeling myself recently because ah, oh, I really hate to lose this hobby as I say, I've enjoyed it for so long and I've got so much to offer that being denied that ability really, really makes me, you know, kind of upset and pissed off. So, yeah, I'm a bit under the weather and all I can do is just throw my, all my waking hours now into trying to restore our income via the XJ channel and via some other kind of videos. I don't know what I'll be doing over there. And just have to set this aside. Um, I don't think the grumpy old men are ever going to change their perspective. And I don't know, they're becoming increasingly less relevant, but I, don't, I can't afford to keep funding things until they are uh, basically no longer an issue. So there you go. So if you're upset with the situation, if you're as upset as I am, well, you know who to blame. I mean, I quite fairly point the blame straight at Model Flying New Zealand. You can see the figures on the XJet channel. It proves the correlation between their actions and my now inability to support myself and my wife, despite the effort and the money we've poured into this. There you go. Um, thank you for watching this. Now I've got a heap of work to do. You'll see me at this bench and out flying a lot in the coming month because I've got so much to catch up on. I've got commitments to people who have sent products to be reviewed. I've got part twos which I've promised which I'll be doing. Um, I will be so busy that I won't even have time to think about this. But then as I say, as of the end of September, um, this all goes in the box. All these models get stuck in boxes and they get put away. And if a little further down the track, there's no sign of anything happening. I will give away the products that have been given to me because uh, I can't sell them. There are tax implications if I sell anything that people have sent me. And I will, I'll give them to worthy 
you know, worthy recipients who are going to use them and enjoy them and get some value from them, even if I can't. And then I'll sell the stuff that I own and um, I will basically, I don't know what I'll do, really don't. I, I'm so pissed off that some grumpy old men have driven me out of this hobby in the way they have. Um, I don't know how you feel, but, um, you know, I suspect you're no happier than I am, although if you magnify magnify your frustration and anger by a million times, you're getting close to the level I feel. So that's it. That's the big announcement. I wish it had been something that was a little more um, cheerful and uh, welcome, but you know, those are the facts. And as you know on RC Model Reviews, I tell it like it is. <laughs> so now I will get back to the bench for one of the last times and uh, stick with me. You know, never know what will happen. Bye for now. <laughs>